Welcome back. I'm finally done with my final exam. So I can make videos again now. And in this video, I want to make something that I wanted to make for a very long time. And that's making actual neon tubes. Why actual? Because uh, there are a lot of uh, videos on YouTube about like making DIY neon tubes, but these usually use LEDs or for example, these electroluminescent wires. And yeah, everyone with two brain cells can just put some LEDs together. But I want to do like real neon tubes because actual neon tubes really look very unique. I actually saw one at a barber shop a while ago and this is just looks super nice and much better than LEDs. Well, you might ask, Joni, isn't making neon signs and neon tubes pretty complicated? And yeah, sort of true, but I think I have a way around that. So to make a neon tube, you need a vacuum pump. This is a pretty big one, but you can get pretty cheap ones from eBay. You need some glass tubing. You can also get this from, I don't know, eBay or some other seller. And you need a gas to fill the tube with. And right now, just for testing, I'm using helium. You can get these like balloon helium things. Uh, but I'm also, uh, I also ordered some neon and that's going to arrive soon, hopefully. And the last thing you usually need is two electrodes on opposite sides of your tube. And this is where the problems start. If you have electrodes in there, any impurity in the tube or on the electrodes will degrade the lifespan of the tube. And in normal neon signs, this is mitigated by passing a very high current through the tube and this will drive off any impurities. This is called bombarding and yeah, it takes quite a bit of equipment. The footage I'm using is from the channel Neon Preservation and if you want to see the equipment used and how it's done, then check that channel out. But I thought uh, this is getting way too complicated for a amateur at home and i thought let's try to make a neon sign without any electrodes this would get rid of this problem and you would just need a vacuum pump and some glass tubing so when i first thought about it i thought maybe you could build something like an induction lamp which uses a coil and the lamp itself is basically a loop and yeah the light is created by the magnetic field by the changing magnetic field the problem is you would have to make the neon light basically into a loop so this is not ideal but then i thought uh, i also made these mini glass ampules filled with low pressure glass as well and they light up if you just put them between two contacts of a flyback transformer so could you just make this longer could you make a neon sign and just have no electrodes on them well check this out so the answer seems to be yes this is a pretty long piece and i just have two pieces of aluminum foil on either side and an ac flyback and it works so the tube is not that bright because I'm using a transformer that I made a while ago to drive these voltage multipliers and the voltage on this is not that high. So I need a new secondary for this transformer and I need a flyback driver. And this is where our sponsor JLC PCB comes in. I ordered some more PCBs modeled after these cheap ZVS drivers and yeah, that's no comparison. Look how much better this looks so i'm really happy how this turned out initially i also thought of making the coil or the form of the coil out of cardboard and some epoxy but then i thought wait a minute i can just make a cnc machine part at jlc pcb and that's what this is this looks much more professional than <laughs> this crap i made and it will definitely withstand higher voltages so huge thanks 
for sponsoring this video. They currently have a Christmas sale that's actually going until late January. But even if you miss that, they constantly have coupons and special deals. So if you want some professional looking PCBs, some CNC machine parts, or even 3D printing, then click the link in the description. JLC PCB will make it happen. All right, let's get back to the video. To make the coil, I just wound a layer of copper wire and then each layer is insulated by four layers of baking paper. And now it just has to be filled with epoxy to make sure everything is isolated. Jesus Christ, I'm trying to fill the coil with epoxy so it's not arcing over and it just keeps bubbling out. There's still air in there. And having it, I, I put it on the on the vacuum pump for like I don't know, the last three hours. I started this afternoon or something. This stuff is hardening. Like this is already pretty thick, and there's still air coming out of this bloody thing. I'm not sure if this is now correctly done. <laughs> This is absolutely terrible. Everything is an absolute mess. It's all over the place. My fingers are sticky. Jesus Christ. This was not nice. <laughs> all right, the flyback coil is done as well as the ZVS driver. Unfortunately, the coil has some voids in there and I can tell that the epoxy did not penetrate very deeply. So I'm not sure if this is going to hold up. I did think this might be a problem. So I do have a second one. So if you have any suggestions how to epoxy this, then leave it in the comments. It's finally working. Look at that. All right, you're probably sitting there now and thinking, Joni, we're at, what, eight or nine minutes of the video and you're still working on this bloody transformer. When are we going to see some neon tubes? And let me tell you, I know exactly how you feel because this is some neon gas and it arrived a couple days ago. And since then, I really wanted to make some neon tubes. So let's get to it. All right, so I have a little bit of a problem. This is the valve that goes onto the bottle and I bought this a while ago and somehow forgot if all this stuff fits together. And now it seems like I have no hose adapter that fits onto there. So that kind of sucks. I have this piece, this fits in here and this fits on here. Um, I could try to solder this on here. It doesn't have to take a lot of pressure. Uh, or I could directly use either solder or epoxy this in here. I don't really have a lot of experience soldering, so I would prefer epoxy, but I don't know if epoxy is that good of an idea on this thing. All right, I give up. This looks absolutely terrible and I will probably get a lot of comments how badly I messed this up. But I don't know, I used flux. This is the wrong flux. This is for brazing. This is soft solder for pipes. I don't know. I'm just going to uh, epoxy this now. All right, while this is drying, let's address the elephant in the room. How do we connect the neon gas to the neon tube and the neon tube to the vacuum pump? So to make the tube for testing that I filled with helium, I use this thing and I think you can already see this is a bad idea. Um, I could tell it's leaking and this is not a good solution for uh, such an expensive gas as neon. You could probably build something out of plumbing parts and valves. I think that would be, this would work fine, but I went a little bit overboard with it and this is what I came up with. I couldn't find a good source for these high vacuum valves so I bought 
some test tubes that are for air sensitive chemistry and I just cut the bottom off made a piece here that I can put these together and one line goes here this is going to our neon tube down here is the connection for the vacuum pump and here is the connection for our gas what I don't have is uh, a pressure gauge on this whole construction. Uh, I will probably add this at some point in the future. All right, this is the final setup. Yes, it looks very improvised. That's because it's very improvised. But um, yeah, that's the pump going to the valve assembly. And I'm just going to test it with some air for now. And if no leaks are there or some other problems, then maybe we can even fill it with some neon this evening. But for now, I'm just going to switch on the pump uh, really quickly, see if everything is okay. And then we can pump it down a bit more and fill it with neon. All right, I was playing around with this thing for a while and for now I'm just going to use the Tesla coil uh, just so I don't have any wires. It's a bit easier to use. And yeah, I played around with it and I think now I'm going to try to fill it with a little bit of neon gas. For that I'm put together the valve and this is going to connect here and to this syringe because there's no pressure regulator on this thing. So um, I'm going to slowly fill up the syringe and then I'm going to use the neon that's in the syringe to fill the tube. So, uh, well, let's see how this will look and how well this will work. So the first tube is finished and well, it looks purple. It, it looked better yesterday, so today it looks even worse. Um, yeah, pretty bad. So I was under the impression that the removal of residual gas in the tube that's still stuck there is just there to preserve the electrodes and make the tube actually last a reasonably long time. But apparently this is not only the reason and it seems like a small amount of contamination in the tube like nitrogen or oxygen that's still like stuck on the walls or something and will diffuse out will affect the color drastically. This is obviously a problem because then it's not really as simple as just putting a tube on a vacuum pump, filling it with neon and be done with it. So yeah, that sucks. Luckily, I do have an idea how to fix this and that's by putting some magnesium ribbon into the tube. Uh, I know this works with electrodes. Some There are some people on YouTube who did this and this works. I think someone even suggested this on my channel. And with electrodes, this works. I have no idea if this works without any electrodes, but let's just try it out and see if that's an easy fix for that. So I made a tube with magnesium in there and it's blue. I don't know what's going on. It's blue now for some reason. 
So in the attempt with the magnesium, I did use the blowtorch to heat up the tube a little bit and it actually looked very promising before sealing it. So I went back and I made another tube and this time I actually really blowtorched it and made sure it's above 200 degrees C for at least 30 minutes. And let me show you how it looks. Turn down the light a little bit. Look at that. I can still see it looks a little bit diluted, but I think I'm ready now to make a proper neon sign. So I tried making a neon sign and it's supposed to say neon. The N still looks pretty good, but it's starting to look pretty bad at the E. And I think if I try to make the rest, I'm going to mess this up and start again. So I obviously need more practice than I can do in one video. So I'm going to cut this here, just have an E and that's going to be the neon sign. And I'm going to practice later and make another video or whatever. But for now, I'm just going to move on with this. So obviously the syringe is not that great and I think I'm going to get a lot of comments about all the silicon tubing and plastic but for now I don't really have a better solution and what I do have a bigger problem with is actually the valves. These are super touchy and yeah if I turn it just a little bit it's either too much or too little flow so I'm definitely going to need a needle valve instead of this high vacuum valve here and I need to figure out how to attach this properly and yeah maybe do a bit better job than silicone tubing and this uh, but for now I'm just going to solve this by by using a little bit more gas than the 10 milliliters and for that I'm just using a upside down measuring cylinder with a tube in there and that way I can, I'm going to put some vacuum pump oil in here and that way I can measure out precise amounts of gas and I have 100 milliliters. This should be enough if I adjust it correctly so I have the time to check the valve connections and see how well uh, the neon will glow and then I can seal it off and that should be enough for that. But obviously it's using more gas which is not great with a needle valve, I would definitely be fine with 10 milliliter volume or, or something like that. All right, I put everything together as usual. I pulled a little bit of a vacuum already yesterday, so there's currently vacuum, maybe this helps. And I'm going to put it on the pump for longer, heat it up the usual routine and then fill it with neon. So let's get this done because New Year's Eve is actually uh, in a couple hours and I want to get this done this year so let's go. <laughs> All right finally done I have my neon tube. Unfortunately it does not work with the circuit like I intended. On the other hand it looks absolutely beautiful if I put it next to the Tesla coil. So I guess the electric field needs to be parallel and it does not work with a bent tube like this. So lesson learned, I guess I need to put some electrodes in there, but that's a problem that I have to solve next year because it's now even closer to New Year's Eve. So until next time and bye. <laughs>